Okay, so this is the last item on the list, the jukebox. Oh, finally, I can't believe I'm here already now. And so this is just made out of uh, 15 thou and 10 thou plastic. Um, I think I might even have a piece of 20 in there. It's just all scrap, so. Uh, so the actual jukebox itself is just under five feet high or so, and up to about this panel, push button panel with the LP labels, etc which is going to be this part here is about just over three feet high above waist level kind of thing and then I just put a bit of an angle on it like that it's just a box like the air conditioner it's the same thing see how I built it on a flat back piece and I just trimmed it off right just to give me something basis you know a solid base to build the box onto and then I just trimmed away this cut a bit of an angle there like that and then what I'm going to do is use some five thou clear I'll just put a piece of Tamiya tape this shape on both sides glue it to the side here and then add a piece on the front with a little bit of gacky detail to represent this LP picker here and then now uh, when I paint it I'll peel the tape away and it'll reveal this glass You know, the beauty of HO is the scope. Eh? The scope at which you can model within the intimacy of the scene. Like, I know O, like, like, like O is really hard to beat. Like, if you're doing stuff like this, it, uh, O, like for the little intimate scene with a few figures and, you know, that little vignetted scene, O is just rocks, right? Furthermore, so does 135th. But I, I just mean sort of model railroad centric in terms of HO and O. Like, the thing with O is if you want to go into the more macro scene, then you need more space to begin to run out of space. But HO f provides a little bit greater scope, and yet you can still model in the micro. So uh, you can see how I'm sort of shaping up the, uh, you know, the the jukebox here. I just want to point something out to you. Um, so I'm just winging it, and I love modeling like this because it's stress-free for me. I don't get bogged down. I mean, you can't do a drawing of a model like this. Jeez. You just got to grab scrap and just evolve it together, you know, as you build and have fun with it. Now, I'm going to sheet the front of this with this 5 thou clear, see? See that? You can bend that and crease that. Okay, I'm going to use that for the sides and for the front. Okay. And then here, look at this, you know, like, remember how I mentioned how I got lucky with this model? Like, check this out. Like, these are the photo etched pieces, right, that from HD models, you know, all that Gundam stuff. So I've used a few on some vents because these are really nice vents for HO and O by HD models. They're all in the kiosk, like, like the hobby shops that do the Gundam, which I'm not really interested in, but I sure love all their support details, though. They transfer well to any scale or any subject, really. But look here, like this is going to be perfect for the big speaker cabinet here, right? See there? I got lucky there. See, I didn't measure this first. I didn't even think of it right away when I framed this up. But that's going to fit perfectly on there. I'll just paint the front black. And then I'll just install that photo etch piece right on the front and it should look really good. I'll use some matte medium so it disappears and glues that in place. Isn't that neat? Okay, so I just wanted to throw this in. I know I've mentioned it before, but in case for some of those who have missed it. So I'm actually just building this disc part right here. I, you know, I just want to give an impression of the disc and then maybe some sort of 
khaki detail in front of it or whatever, an HO scale. So what I do is I just build it like it was just a piece of, it was just an off cut of tube, right? I just sliced a piece of tube there. Once again, scrap, right? And then I glued it onto a piece of, this is 20 thou plastic. And then I'm able to hold the piece in my hand and then file it down or sand it down flush to a reasonable thickness so I can resheat the other side. But now I can also hold the part in my hand, right? Like while I'm building it up. And then when it's done, I just slice it off right here and touch it up with a file. It's just that it's easier to handle small parts like this. And even though I cut that off, then I'll use this for another, you know, detail part or whatever. Anyway, so I build it onto a sprue. It's just like a sprue, like a, from a model kit, right? It's the same principle. You know what I mean? And then once this is built up, then this is going to drop in like this, see? Which will be sort of indicative of this kind of detail here. That's all that's needed in HO anyway, okay? Just thought I'd share that with you, just as a little gentle reminder on how to build these insane little parts like this for any model. Okay, so I just want to show you how I do this sort of glass cabinet here. Like notice how, so this is glass, glass, right? So I want to capture just, you know, that feel of this sort of big speaker cabinet, right? With the sort of glass enclosure where the record LP uh, actuator is, etc. So now what I've done is, is I take some of this clear 905. This is nice to have too, this... 0 0.005 thou thick clear. This stuff is really handy and looks really nice for windows and glazing, okay? So it comes in uh, uh, 0 0.005 thou, 10 thou, 15 thou, okay? And the thinner it is, the more sheets you get. So one pack of this will last you forever. Okay, so remember the uh, yard office build? Like, remember how I showed you how I built the whole back wall on a clear piece, but I just masked out the window. So in this case, I'm just going to mask out this part and on the front as well. But I'm going to paint where this tape is, but I just have this tape here now because I'm holding these two pieces. There's two here in place because what I did was, is I just used scissors. Like this stuff cuts beautiful with scissors. I like don't try to cut this with a knife because you just, well, I mean, you can, but it's, it's actually more difficult, but if you cut it with scissors, it cuts just like papers. You can cut any shape with it. It's really easy. Uh, if you want to scribe a straight line, then use a ruler with a nice number 11 blade. But if you want to cut a curve like that, you can cut it with scissors, and then you can also file it with a nail file, like nice and round, like the edge there. So I rounded it off, because what, what I'm going to do there is with the other piece. I don't have one in my hand yet, but I'm going to wrap it around like that, see? I'm just going to wrap the front clear piece around the front, which will also be masked off, and I'll just paint the edges and the bottom piece, and then I'll peel the tape away, and I'll have an inner cabinet you can look through and get a glint off the glass. So there's two pieces here. I'll just slide them apart, and I'll glue them on each side to build up the sides of the cabinet. The back, I don't have to. But before I put these on... I'm going to paint the inside of this with some, just some, you know, clear Tamiya colors, yellow and, and blue and red to get this violet color. First, I'm going to paint the inside of this first and then silver, let it dry, and then I'm going to build up the sides and close it all in, okay? And then when it's painted on the outside, I'll peel the tape off to reveal this kind of a look or impression, okay?
Okay, so I just want to show you the inside of the jukebox cabinet uh, before I close it up. Uh, it'll be unmasked after I paint it, so you'll see it then as well. But I just want to just talk about this for a minute or two, just to cover this part. So I basically built this up out of 20 thou plastic scrap, right? Okay. And then I added a 1 16th dowel to hold it with. I have to now because i got to put the front panel on. I can't really hold the little jukebox in my hand anymore without messing it up. So... Um, so I sort of built a, you know, just a casual rendition of the LP player. You can see the little record there, <laughs> the 45, and then the disc deal where they go into or whatever. And just an impression of it, right? It looks pretty cool. Like it, it specs out to be, um, I think it's about, uh, what is it, five feet high? Where's my HO scale ruler here? Yeah, it's five feet high by... You know, two and a half wide. So it's specced out to a standard jukebox of its time. They're mostly all speaker cabinet, really. And then, of course, the, you know, the LP player. But anyway, so what I did was, is I built the box up and I want to have the glass cabinet, right? So how I do that is by using 5 thou. Okay. And I just sheeted the side. I cut these two together, stacked them together, cut them out with scissors. I think I, tr I had to do it a couple of times until I got them right. And then, because a little curve back here to fit against this curved back piece, which I just used a, a drill bit to just bend that piece around, right? That's what I used to bend plastic with, just over any round object that's close to the diameter. It doesn't have to be exact. So uh, now that I've skinned the sides, I just put a piece of Tamiya tape over the outside cabinet, like the see-through part, because I don't want that to get painted on both sides like the inside will be be sealed up so i'm not worried about getting paint in there and what i'm going to do is is i put another piece here a five thou like over the the front like this okay so i rolled this over the drill bit as well just to get that curve and a little bit of overlap i'll just trim it and then i'm going to glue it first at the bottom here i'll just tack it there and glue it about maybe halfway up because I don't want the glue to seep up into the inside of the glass cabinet, right? And then what I'll do is, is I'll just tack the top very carefully just along this edge right here. And then I'm going to mask off the front of this. Actually, this looks, looks like a U.S. post box. <laughs> anyway, um, so very carefully mask the front like this here. And then I'll just put a, an embossed piece here. I'll just show you a photo of the jukebox kind of give you an idea where I'm going with this um, there's the record player so I'm building this cabinet part right okay and then this sort of embossed panel I'm just going to add from scrap out of some white plastic strip and I'll glue that so that it lays across the front here and it'll get painted as well and then I'll put that little photo etch grill on the bottom to finish it and then just trim the back piece off with scissors or a knife upside down. And then I'll just probably just hit it with the airbrush lightly um, rather than try to just slather on some paint with a regular brush. I don't want to take a chance of, of it capillary, you know, or it seeping inside the cabinet. So I'll just dust it from a distance, a little bit heavier paint than normal. And then I can peel the tape off. And if all goes well, I'll have a nice jukebox cabinet. And this will put the final icing and candle on the cake of the diner, so to speak, okay? Okay, so here's the jukebox ready for paint. So what I did was is I just painted some flesh across the front here, just to sort of indicate this sort of detail right here. Okay, I, I don't want to put all, you can't put all this, it's only HO, so if you built it in a larger scale, you certainly could, but it's not necessary in this scale. I just want a, a suggestion of a variation of color. You can see the clear. This was the front that wrapped all the way around and then I masked off, so this won't get paint when I spray it. Just the little edges will, which will be silver later, but I'll paint it black first because silver always pops better when it's over black. And then the sides were clear, but they were sheeted again over top. And I just cleaned up with some strip and then a sort of embossed piece on the front. And where that flesh is, there's actually a piece of yellow Tamiya tape over that. 
like a long narrow rectangle label so I'll just peel that off after it's done and she'll be done okay so I'll just paint that now I got a little bit heavier than usual black like not the normal um, thin you know that I normally would have because I don't want any seepage and when you airbrush stuff like this uh, you reduce uh, the chances of paint seepage under the tape okay but you, it still uh, helps to put it on very light though first you can see that now you paint over the clear okay Don't want to put it on too heavy because you want to reduce any chances of uh, paint seepage under the tape. And then what I'm going to do here now is is I'll just let that dry, okay, and then I'll just mask off the bottom with one strip and then just hit the top with some silver okay